Welcome to chapter 6. So in this lecture, we will talk about carboxylic acid derivatives and their derivatives. So let's go into the lecture. So in this lecture, we will discuss introduction to carboxylic acids, nomenclature, structure and properties, and we will see the preparation and reactions of carboxylic acids in the first lecture. And after that, we will look at the carboxylic acid derivatives and their reactions. So let's look at then let's start with the first one introduction to carboxylic acids. So carboxylic acids are abundant in nature so the most common of them are generally found in a wide variety of synthetic pharmaceuticals. For example acetic acid is the pungent smell uh, that uh, pungent smell giving compound in vinegar. Butanoic acid is the rancid odor of the sour butter that you end up getting. Hexanoic acid is the responsible for the order of dirty socks. Lactic acid is the taste of sour milk. Acetyl salicylic acid is used in aspirin, common analgesic, which is used for treating fever and headaches. And you have 4 amino salicylic acid, it's used in the treatment of tuberculosis. And isotretinoin, that's used in the treatment of acne. So these are some of the common compounds that contain carboxylic groups. A carboxylic group is any side chain that's attached with double bonded carbon and an OH group. So you have a carb carbonyl side and on one side you have an alkyl compound and on the other side we have an OH group. So this group is called as a carboxylic acid. So this is what we call a carboxylic acid. So in the US, we produce about 2.5 million tons of acetic acid per year. Most commonly, it's used to prepare vinyl acetate, which is common, uh, common one that's used in paints and adhesives. So it has good sticking properties and good adhesive properties. So it's used in adhesives a lot and also in paints. So carboxylic acid derivatives such as vinyl acetate are very common and they play a central role in organic chemistry, even sometimes in biochemistry as well. So monocarboxylic acids are named after the suffix oic acid. So we take the compound, notice that here you have four carbons and on the last carbon there is a double bond OH. So it's a butane. So we replace E with oic acid. So what happens here? It's butane. So butane gets replaced with butanoic acid. In the same way, even if you have any other side chains, remember that the carbon that contains the uh, carboxylic group always gets the first number. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So there are two methyl groups on 4 and one hydroxy group on 5. So it becomes 5 hydroxy, 4, 4 dimethyl pentanoic acid. So this is how you can name the compound. So when the carboxylic acid is attached to a ring, so we call this alkane carboxylic acid. So for example, we have a cyclohexane. So if there is a carbon that COOH group attached to the original structure, we call that cyclohexane carboxylic acid. So some uh, carboxylic acids have common names as well. So formic acid is one of the compounds that is, uh, you know, sprayed into your body when you have an ant bite. So when ants bite, they release this formic acid. And acetic acid is the one that you generally see in, uh, in vinegar. You also have propanoic acid, butyric acid and benzoic acid. So these are some common names of compounds that are different from the original IUPAC name. So the IUPAC name of this compound will become methanoic acid would be for formic acid. Acetic acid would be ethanoic acid. Propionic acid will become PROPAI. NOIC acid and butyric acid is originally butanoic acid and the last one is benzoic acid. So these are some common names for compounds that are generally used in regular places. Next you also have dicarboxylic acids where you have two carboxylic groups at each end. So this is not possible for cyclic compounds but it is possible for compounds that contain uh, long chain rings. 
so we call that dioic acid so we basically did not change anything in the original alkane name we just replace it with dioic acid so here we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 so it's pentane and there are two OH, two COH groups so that gives you dioic acid some carbo com common names oxalic acid for ethane dioic acid malonic acid for propane dioic acid succinic acid for butane dioic acid glutaric acid for pentane dioic acid so these are so this both these compounds are exactly the same what is the structure is exactly the same so use the knowledge now from nomenclature and try to solve these problems so pause the video right here and try to draw try to solve these problems next let's go to structure and properties of carboxylic acids so we recall that carbonyl is a tri trigonal planar geometry because it has sp2 hybridization the carbon that you have has sp2 hybridization so that's the reason why sp2 hybrids are generally structures that have a trigonal planar structure so that's the reason why it's a plane uh, it's a planar structure which means it's a single plane now the acid moiety is generally capable of strong hydrogen bonding includes hydrogen bonding and between the acid pairs so remember hydrogen bonding is between a lone pair and a hydrogen that's attached to a electronegative high electronegative atom so again hydrogen and a lone pair so as a result carboxylic acids are generally ones that have high boiling points than alcohols because remember that in alcohols they do not they generally form per molecule only one hydrogen bond but here they form multiple hydrogen bonds because of that reason uh, there is more chance of having a hydrogen bond here so that's why it has a little higher boiling point than alcohol so recall that carboxylic acids are generally weak acids so and exist as a carbo carboxylate salt in presence of a base so when you put it in a salt the proton transfer occurs and it exists as a carboxylate salt so what happens here is the proton moves out and oxygen gets the negative charge and the sodium gets a positive charge and the OH and H become H2O. So these carboxylate ions are generally referred to as O8. So for example benzoic acid if you remove the H and we write this becomes benzoate and there is a sodium here so we call this compound sodium benzoate. So remember this name O8. So in place of OEC acid we replace it with O8. So that is carboxylate ions that end in the subject O8. So in water, carboxylic acids only dissociate very slightly. So the reason is because they are very weak acids. For example, if you take, uh, for example, if you take uh, acetic acid here, acetic acid when you put it in water, it forms acetate ion and H3O plus. Because it is a weak acid, the pKa of most carboxylic acids is generally between four and five. An example of that would be to take uh, acetic acid which is about 4.76 and if you have an electron withdrawing group like for example say benzene it increases the acidity if you have electron donating groups it increases the it decreases the acidity so compared to HCl or H2SO4 carboxylic acids are very weak but when you compare it to an alcohol they are relatively acidic which means that when you consider uh, acetic acid and ethanol notice that both compounds have the same two carbons but the existence of the double bond is not there because of that reason it creates a lot of difference in the acidity of the compounds alcohols are much less acidic than carboxylic acids so that that's why the name carboxylic acid so when you compare it with alcohols uh, carboxylic acids are highly acidic and also recall that the stability of the conjugate base due to resonance because notice that between the two structures which one would we see acidic when you don't have pH values is we use this we use the principal ARIO so we use ARIO and test the most stable conjugate base whichever is the most stable conjugate base that becomes the more acidic structure so remember that principle here so use that uh, principle now and pause the video right here and try to solve these problems.
next let's talk about structure and the properties of carboxylic acids so consider the equilibrium between a carboxylic acid and a carboxylate ion at physiological ph the acid and the conjugate act a conjugate base act as a buffer so because they can act as a buffer if you recall the henderson hasselbalch equation we know that ph equal to pka plus log of conjugate base by acid so of, at physiological ph of 7.3 the ratio of carboxylate ion to the corresponding carboxylic acid is 1000 to 1 so which is about for one molecule of carboxylic acid there is 1000 molecules of carboxylate ions that are produced now pyruvic acid also exist primarily as a pyruvate ion at physiological ph so when you use it at physiological ph it favors the carboxylate ion formation so these carboxylate ions are one of the most vital role they play one of the most vital roles in biology we will talk more about it in uh, the concepts when we discuss citric acid cycle because that is where you will see this a lot now recall that electron withdrawing substituents have a great effect on acidity so we already discussed this when we discussed the concept of or as when we discussed the stability of acids and bases so there we talked about having the electron withdrawing group so for example if we just have carbon that has a much lower ph or pka much higher pka but as you start adding more and more electron withdrawing groups you notice that the pka starts to reduce rapidly increasing the acidity and also depends on where the where the electron withdrawing groups are so we generally use two positions to refer to the electron withdrawing group so one position is the alpha carbon alpha carbon is the carbon right after the carboxylic carbon beta carbon is the one that's after alpha and gamma is the one that's after after beta so this is how we can write alpha beta and gamma positions now if it's in the beta position it's still going to have a little higher ph it higher acidity than the one that does not have it the same way the farther you go the lesser the acidity the farther the electron donating group is from the carboxylic group the lesser the acidity so this is how we can justify the structures here now electron withdrawing substituents also affect benzoic acid as well so when you take benzoic acid depending on the where the z that is present there if it's no2 it generally is going to be having a higher uh, so nitrobenzene nit nitrobenzoic acid is one of the strongest benzoic acids and when you start knowing that you have uh, groups that you start from electron withdrawing to electron donating you end up noticing that these structures having uh, they reduce the acidity much higher and higher as you go along so use the principles that we just discussed and try to solve these problems next let's discuss preparation of carboxylic acids so the first one that we discussed was the oxidative cleavage of alkynes when we use terminal alkynes except more commonly internal alkynes we will notice that the oxidative cleavage or ozonolysis creates carboxylic acids so oxidative cleavage basically breaks the triple bond and forms two carboxylic acids next one is the oxidation of primary alcohols when you take a primary alcohol and oxidate it in the presence of sodium chromate and uh, sulfuric acid you can create you can create carboxylic acids so here you can use a variety of strong oxidizing agents and we can oxidize primary alcohols to produce carboxylic acid so we discussed this in the first chapter in organic 2 next is the oxidation of alkyl benzenes so oxidation of alkyl benzenes again here you are taking a general structure and you are oxidizing it in presence of sodium dichromate and sulfuric acid that also creates benzoic acid so what is happening here any alkyl group attached to an aromatic ring will completely get oxidized to give benzoic acid benzoic ring remember that the position where it forms the acid is the benzoic uh, benzylic position so this is the benzylic position here so that is where the oxidation generally occurs so there are two more reactions that produce carboxylic acids one is the hydrolysis of nitriles nitriles are compounds with r c so cyano group attached to an alkyl group so c triple bond again 
in when you start using water in presence of acid it creates carboxylic acids so hydrolysis also creates carboxylic acids so here what generally happens is this allows a two step synthesis of carboxylic acid so when we start we use an alkyl halide and then we add a cyano group we are using substitution reactions once we add the cyano group then we add an acid in presence of water that creates the COOH oxidation so there are the second reaction is the carboxylation of grignard reagent with carbon dioxide so when you use a grignard reagent so remember that a grignard reagent is rmgbr so when you use rmgbr it becomes r minus and mgbr plus so the r minus reacts with co2 and forms carboxylate ion carboxylate ion on further hydrolysis in presence of h3o plus creates carboxylic acid so the second process is the acidic workup where we add acid to make the carboxylate ion to form carboxylic acid so this is the grignard reaction part so this gives us a second method to convert an alkyl halide into a carboxylic acid so there are two steps here first we do the grignard reaction where we make it into a grignard reagent and second we add carbon dioxide and h3o plus so when we add them finally we end up getting the carboxylic acid so use this principle now and they are asking you to identify the reagents you would use to perform the following transformation so first draw the structures and look at the two say, two reactions the total of five reactions that we have and judge which reagents are to be used for the following transformations that to happen so pause the video right here and try to solve this problem next let's go to reactions of carboxylic acids so carboxylic acids can be reduced to a primary alcohol when we use lithium aluminum hydride so in presence of lithium aluminum hydride you do reduction so where it removes oxygen and attaches hydrogen in its place causing it to form alcohols so more commonly carboxylic acids always create primary alcohols next lithium aluminum hydride is a really strong base so the first thing that it does is it deprotonates the carboxylic acid first so what will happen here the aluminum hydride part deprotonates the carboxylic acid part creating carboxylate ion and you have alh3 and h2 formation the carboxylate ion then becomes reduced to an aldehyde because of the reaction between uh, the carbon and the oxalate group and finally creates a primary aldehyde the aldehyde is then reduced to a primary alcohol remember that the if we, if we talked about oxidation we already talked about this so in oxidation we start with an alcohol we become it becomes an aldehyde and then we form a carboxylic acid so we are come doing the reaction in reverse in reverse in hydro in reduction reaction we start with a carboxylic acid it reduces to an aldehyde and the aldehyde then again reduces to finally to form the primary alcohol so this is the reduction reaction in reverse the oxidation reaction in reverse so we can use bor borohydride as well instead of lah so borohydride is also chemoselective for the carboxylic acid so it only selectively interchanges the compounds meaning that it does not touch the compounds in any other manner so it does not change the original structure so the structure will stay the same so chemoselectivity of bh3 allows for the reduction of carboxylic acid in the presence of an ester so tetrahydrofuran so using this principle now try to solve these problems so you have a bromo structure they are asking you to create an alcohol so how would you create that first convert this into an alcohol by using a grignard reaction and then using the sorry first convert that into an acid using grignard reaction then from acid into an aldehyde and then from the aldehyde into the primary alcohol so use the same principle for the last one as well so pause the video right here and try to solve these problems so with that we end the topic on carboxylic acids In the next lecture we'll talk about the derivatives or car derivatives or carboxylic acid derivatives